Welcome everyone to the Inland Sports Show. Before we start the show, make sure you like this video and you've subscribed to the Inland Sports Show YouTube channel. And if you're a local business or organization and you'd like to promote yourself on this show, just send us an email, inlandsportsshow at gmail.com. The show starts right now. And what is up, everybody? Welcome to your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez. We are live and amplified at Team Vision TV 16, and we got a huge show coming up today. A lot of high school baseball. We'll also touch on some high school boys volleyball. Uh, later in the show, we're going to check in with Lenny Duran. He is the new head coach of the Aquinas softball team. And if you haven't heard about the Falcons this season, they haven't lost. They are 26-0 and on the year. Coach Duran will join us live a little bit later. We'll also check in with Summit Baseball Coach Sammy Lopez. The Skyhawks are almost there to another Sunkiss League Championship. Big walk-off win against Bloomington last night. Coach Lopez will join us on the show. And Hillcrest Boys Volleyball. They have not lost a game in River Valley League play ever, including this season. Another league championship going undefeated. Head coach Everton Souza will join us a little bit later on the show to talk some boys volleyball at Hillcrest. But we start things off with Corona High School Baseball. Huge series this week against Centennial. Johnny, let's show him the Ken Sporting Goods must-see game. Corona took game one against the Huskies on Monday. The series continuing today. So if you're watching this live and amplified right now, they're probably just wrapping up game two of that three game series. Now Corona, the heavy favorite. Centennial, probably the number one contender to compete with the Panthers for that big eight league championship. So game two of that series today on Wednesday, they'll go one more time on Friday to wrap up the three game set. It's our Ken Sporting Goods must see game, or I should say games, plural, right? With a big three game series between Centennial and Corona. We had a chance to talk to four of the Corona seniors that helped the Panthers win the National High School Invitational Championship in Cary, North Carolina this past weekend. And uh, the Panthers talking about this prestigious tournament, the final four, the semifinals of this tournament, all Southern California teams, all from the Southern section and the Corona Panthers coming out with the title. Here's our interview with the Corona High School baseball team. Inland Sports. And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show, fresh off their NHSI championship in North Carolina. Big series against Centennial this week. They took game one against the Huskies. We're talking about the Corona Panthers. Guys, man, congrats on the that national title that you guys won out there at the home of USA Baseball in North Carolina. But you guys jump right back into Big 8 League play, and it's a big series against Centennial. You got a big one on Monday. Um, I do want to talk about that series, but first – we got to talk about the uh, the National High School uh, Invitational Championship, and and Josh, let me start with you, Josh Springer here. Um, man, that's the most prestigious national baseball tournament in the country, featuring the best teams in in the whole th nation. What did it mean to you, Josh, and the program to bring home that championship? Uh, you know, it, it really meant a lot to us after um, two heartbreaking championships we lost in the PVR and Boris. Uh, we really just wanted to squeak one out, especially in North Carolina as one of the national championship. Uh, all that hard work, we, were, we couldn't get the ones in PBR and Boris. We heartbreaker losses, and then we felt really good about North Carolina coming out. It was our first tournament. We've never done anything like this before, so we didn't know what to expect, but we were just all having a great time with it, and we came out on top, so it was just a great feeling for us. And what's crazy is, like you mentioned, some of those other, you know, big time tournaments you guys played in as well earlier this season. You know, I, not to say those are lesser than the National High School Invitational, but I mean, this is like the best of the entire country um, going into it. Did you guys feel pretty good about yourself? 
For, yeah, for sure. We felt really good about ourselves. I mean, playing teams from different states uh, was really cool as well. And then just happened to be us final four Cali teams, which is the best baseball in Cali. So that was what a coincidence that was. But I made it even more fun just competing against the same guys. We came back from back home. <laughs> You know, that was my next question. I'll go to you guy, uh, Drake Burkhart over there. And Drake, you got the bucket hat on. Uh, Drake, when we saw the, the, the semifinals, the final four, you know, for that tournament, it was all Southern section schools. It was all Southern California there. Do you think that just speaks volumes of the level of baseball that you guys, I mean, have to go through just to make it to the Division One championship game here in the Southern section? It's crazy. Yeah, I mean... It, it's so hard over here. I mean, all those guys from the other schools are so great. I mean, the weather here just it sets us up for so well. I mean, all those guys, those teams, those final four teams, we've been playing, like we said, in those other two championships. I mean, it's just it makes it so much more personal and so much more of a fun game in carry. So, listen, the pitching was ridiculous um, at the NHSI. I think it was the three shutouts and the four games that you guys had. Drake, the way the team is playing right now, especially the, the way the pitchers are throwing right now, do you feel like the team is, I, I don't know, peaking right now or at least continuing to trend up and getting better and better as the season goes along? No, I definitely think it's just going to keep getting better and better. I mean, these are guys that are kind of, like at least with Seth, he just joined the program this year. I think it's just going to, we're just going to keep merging. We're just going to keep working even better together. And from here, it's just going to keep going up for sure. I mean, I see a lot of good coming in with CIF. Drake, let me ask you this. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but Seth was a homeschool kid, wasn't he? Was. Yeah, he was. And, uh, but he, I, he must have played travel ball, right? It's not like he it was like you know new to baseball or anything, but he was a homeschool kid. Right? I grew up with him. Uh, we played on the same travel team, went from six years old all the way to like 11 years old. So we grew up together, so we already had that kind of connection. So it's pretty cool that he came wrong for my senior year. Mm -hmm. So, guys, I had friends, uh, you know, who did the homeschool thing as well growing up. Did you guys have to convince his parents, like, hey, come on, Seth, Seth needs to join this super team. We, we, we want to win a Division One championship this year. How did that go about? I mean, I, I think they were already kind of ready. He was wanting to. I mean, he saw all the fun. He saw all of us. Like, cause he already kind of knew all of us at the time. So, he was wanting to play with everyone, get that high school experience. And just, we knew we were going to have a really good team. And just adding him to the team just made it a lot better. All right, so we went from Josh to Drake. Let me go to Jonah in the back. He's right behind Drake. There's yeah. Jonah. Jonah, listen, you, obviously you guys are one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to win the Division One championship when we get to the CIF Southern Section playoffs. But, you know, these last couple of weeks of regular season play, what do you think the Panthers need to continue doing well to give you guys a shot to, to maybe bring home that D1 title? Fundamentals. It all comes down to fundamentals. If we can continue per perfecting the fundamentals, such as bunt defense, PFPs, I think we could dial it in and um, grab ourselves a D Division One championship. Now, Jonah, listen, the four of you guys are seniors, but I remember talking to Coach Wise last year, and he's like, man, he's like, we got a bunch of young guys, you know, coming up. There's a lot of talent coming up. But for you guys as seniors, I mean, how important it would be or how cool would it be for you, Jonah, and, this, and the rest of the seniors to go out like this, to win a championship on your way out? It would be insane. It would, it would top off the four years of grinding at Corona High. And it would make all our senior, like, our little selves happy <laughs> to get a Division One championship. Yeah. You know, let me go to, uh, well, screen right, but to your left, that's Tyler over there, Tyler Karn. And, and Tyler, you know, when I, when I look at this team, you guys have been so dominant, and there was huge expectations on the team going into this season. Did you in embrace the pressure? Did you like the pressure? Did, obviously, you knew that you guys were the team to beat all season long, yeah. right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I feel like all of my four years coming up through this program, we've always had that target on our back. You know, Coach Wise always talks about that 24-7. Every meeting, he's like, beginning of each season, he sets us aside. He's like, hey, listen, guys. He's like, you guys are going to go out there, and he's like, every team wants to beat you guys. He's like, you guys can be the best, do everything better than the rest. And, you know, we got, we just got a really good squad this year and we all like, we all just get along really well. And there's a very, very good connection on the team. So, yeah, I feel like pretty good, pretty good bond with the whole entire team. 
Tyler, let me ask you um, about the last, I don't know, 48 hours or so or 72 hours. I mean, you guys win on Saturday and then you hustle back to Southern California. I assume you get Sunday to kind of relax and regroup a little bit. And then it's right back into league play on Monday in a huge series against Centennial. Um, what was Coach's message just going back into Monday? Like, I don't know if it was, hey, guys, that tournament was awesome. It was such a huge deal. You know, we made national headlines. But we got to regroup and refocus because here we go again. What was what was kind of the message going into this week coming off that huge high? Yeah, no, for sure. We definitely embraced the, the win on the national championship. But in the back of all of our minds, we knew the job wasn't finished. We had to come back out and we had a tough opponent, Centennial. You know, they're coming out to beat us. Like I said earlier, that target on our back. Everybody wants to beat us. Um, yeah, but we just if we just stick to what we've been doing the whole year, just trust the process. And, you know, we have a great squad and we didn't really feel down one bit. We knew we were going to come out with the bats and everything executed perfectly. And um, we're going to go get ready to take a series tomorrow and a league and a league title on Friday. Josh, let me go back to you on this one, because as we look ahead to the Division One playoffs, I know it's maybe not fair because all your attention's on Centennial this week, two big games coming up the rest of the week. But when you look at the Division One playoffs, you're probably going to see th those same schools, right? The teams that you saw in some of these other tournaments. You know, is it good to see that same team maybe more than once, you know, over the course of a season? I mean, you're obviously very familiar with some of these teams that you're probably going to run into. Yeah, I mean, we're playing all these guys that we're going to see right back in the playoffs again, semifinals, quarterfinals, even the championships. So, I mean, it's I mean, it's kind of good in a way, so you can see how they're playing all that stuff, but they get to see how we play too. So, I mean, it's a fair. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a really good playoffs this year, and I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, Josh, going back to last season, um, I caught a little bit of that game against uh, Jay Sarah. Um, how much did that fuel you guys, especially the seniors for you guys coming back? I mean, how much did that fuel you coming into this year? Like, man, we ran into a really good Jay Sarah team, but dude, there's so much still left on the table, some unfinished business. And you obviously the, the talent and the expectations were huge for you guys this year. But did it fuel you like, hey, we got something to prove this year? Yeah, I mean, we're really hungry to go get that title this year. I, we know we can do it. We've been grinding all year. Uh, we we have the squad. We know we do. So we just do what we do. I feel like we have, we give ourselves the best shot to win it all this year. Well, Josh, Drake, Jonah, Tyler, thank you guys so much for uh, hopping on here on the Inland Sports Show. Congratulations on that huge tournament out there in North Carolina. And uh, and best of luck the rest of the way. Hopefully there's still a lot of baseball in front, uh, in front of you guys for the rest of the season as you make this run in the Division One playoffs in a couple of weeks here. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. That's the Corona Panthers baseball team here on the Inland Sports Show. Inland Sports. And a shout out to Coach Wise for making that happen. One of the best dudes out there. Listen, if you didn't see the way they won the NHSI in North Carolina, here it is. It was our big boost play of the week. They met Orange Lutheran in the championship game, and the Panthers were on a roll, especially the pitching staff in this one. They had four games. Three of those games were shutouts for Corona High School. Huntington Beach scored a couple runs on them, but they still won that one. They saw Olu in the finals. They won three zip in the championship game as Andy Wise and the Corona Panthers win the National High School Invitational. If you're not familiar with it, it's essentially, I guess unofficially, the national championship. Only the best of the best in the entire country are invited to the home of USA Baseball out there in Cary, North Carolina to participate in this tournament. We've had teams in the IE in the past go to this one. I, I think Aquinas went last year, but it's only the best of the best. It's only invite only. And there is Coach Wise and the Panthers with the championship trophy, man. Congratulations to them. That was our big boost play. We come back here on the Inland Sports Show. We're going to check in with Aquinas High School softball coach Lenny Duran. The Falcons have not lost all season long. We'll be right back on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show. And this segment of the Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Kin Sporting Goods in Norco. Number one in the Inland Empire for team uniforms, sports equipment, and letterman's jackets. Boost performance training in Corona. Athletes of all levels and all sports train at Boost. And also ask about the Bass Private School. Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Personalized treatment you deserve from an orthodontist you can trust.
Chick-fil-A in Rialto, right off the 210 freeway at Ayala Drive. Eat more chicken. Are you focusing too much on your child's athletic ability? That is this week's Grit Iron question with the one and only Boost Man, Ray Bass, here at the Boost Performance Center. And Coach Bass, you know, this is for the parents out there. What are they emphasizing? Maybe the wrong things in their child's life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I feel like uh, I, I do see a lot of parents um, who focus too much on their child's, you know, raw talent and not putting enough emphasis on them being just good human beings. You know, I, I said it before that there's so many kids who don't make it every year who fall off for one reason or another. And a lot of times it's not about their 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 talent. It's about who they are as individuals, their, their uh, uh, lack of coachability, you know, them being lazy, their huge egos. Those are all things that stand in the way of them reaching the, the, the higher levels you know I always tell my athletes that you know talent may get you through the door but who you are keeps you there you know so I feel that parents need to invest just as much in who their kids are as as little people as they do their their overall talent that all makes sense and unfortunately we've heard too many stories of great athletes and it's the other stuff that keeps them from reaching their full potential uh, you can help that here at boost right oh absolutely you know I mean that's what our values are. Yeah. You know, when, when kids step in this building, whether they're they're training with us, whether they're they're attending our, our, our prep school, you know, it's it's all about that. It's so much about the intangibles and not just about, like I always say, creating robots and just bigger, stronger, faster. All right, well, you can get a well-rounded athlete right here at the Boost Performance Center. That is the one and only Boost Man, Ray Bass. This has been the Grit Iron Question. Make sure you hit us up on the DMs on any Boost Training social media platform if you've got a future Grit Iron Question. is proud to partner with Dr. Marcus Paulson and Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Dr. Paulson and his team work with children, teens, and adults using orthodontic products like traditional braces and Invisalign to make a difference in the appearance, comfort, and function of each patient's teeth. Paulson Orthodontics welcomes new patients, so schedule a visit today. and orthodontics. We make braces fun. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. Listen, we're talking some high school baseball and softball on this show. And the hottest team on the softball diamond right now because, well, they haven't lost all season. The Aquinas Falcons. And join us here on the show, head coach for Aquinas, Lenny Duran. And coach, man, 26-0. I mean, that's obviously a great season so far for you guys. Has it been, I don't know, stressful? Has it been fun? Has it been exciting? What, what's the season been like just trying to keep this winning streak going? Uh, it's been it's been a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster. But, you know, first and foremost, we got to give all the glory to God. And he's been he's blessed me with a beautiful team that has just just mad talent. And I'm just blessed to have them. And uh, but it's been it's been we've had our ups and downs, but I think uh, we're kind of muddling through all the stuff. And so we just keep we're just keep plugging along. We're just keep plugging along. Now, Coach, I have to mention, there was a coaching change midseason. You stepped in there, but the team hasn't skipped a beat. I mean, you guys are just still on a roll. I mean, is that just a testament to, you know, the players you have and their focus and their desire to win? I think so. I think, but I think what we did is we kind of changed the format of 
how we look at things and how we play, um, you know, respecting the game. Uh, we're a little bit more gritty. And so, you know, when they respect the game and it, it changes everything of how you play. And so I think uh, for the most part, everyone's jumped on board. Uh, we had a few that didn't and uh, kind of jumped ship, but it, it's OK. You know, we're just uh, I think the girls are enjoying um, just the grind of it. And so we're just we're just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Well, Coach, you've got one more regular season game in Ambassador League play. You play at Woodcrest Christian on Thursday. If people are watching us right. live on Wednesday night, one more on Thursday against Woodcrest. So um, without looking at the standings, I am assuming you've already wrapped up the outright league championship, right? That, that's all said and done? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, probably when we uh, – against Linfield at, at their place. So, um, yeah, so it, it – it's been good. It's been it's been challenging, but it's been great. It's been great. Now, coach, when, I, when you look at the schedule, you know, you, you had a very busy non-league, you know, you play in these tournaments and you travel a little bit. But the way that the schedule stacks up, you, like we were talking off the air, that you might have like almost a two week gap between, you know, your last game against Woodcrest Christian and the first round of the playoffs because you've got a week off next week. Um, right. I know you'd love to keep playing and just play through, but. If you're trying to be glass half full, maybe maybe it's a good time to regroup and relax and maybe freshen up a little bit, right? Right. And we'll get back to basics. You know, like I said, we'll give them a couple of days off just to be kids and just kind of, you know, uh, get some injuries taken care of and get the girls back back to, uh, you know, where they were of just being kids and then and then back to the grind. We'll get back to the grind. So and hopefully we'll do some inner squad stuff. Unfortunately, like I said, we can't play any scrimmages for many other teams, but we'll figure something else out and uh, get back to fundamentals. Well, Coach, 26 and 0 during this win streak, I mean, what would you say was the, the key ingredient? Was it the pitching? Was it the defense? Was it the hitting? I mean, what would you say really has stood out for you guys this season? Well, it's been – actually, it's been, it's been all aspects of the game. Um, but, you know, we do uh, – my daughter and I, Lexi, we kind of, you know, we're the ones that jumped on board to stay. And, you know, we emphasize hitting. We're aggressive hitters right off the bat. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. But, you know, our pitching has been fantastic. I have, I have five pitchers um, and four of them have been doing fantastic. You know, I got one that that's a young freshman. She just joined us from the JV team. And she, so she's learning a lot, but um, the pitching has been great. You know, I've utilized all of them and that's, and that's how we're, that's how we've been rolling. And, uh, the defense just, these girls just got, they just have a gift from God and they're just, they're just using their talent and it, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It's been great. Well, coach, the team is 26 and 0. So obviously you guys are doing a, you know, a lot of things well during this, this winning streak. And, and you mentioned, you know, several of those right now. Are there areas that you feel like, you know what, we could still get a little bit better, you know, and hopefully peak at the right time as you go into the playoffs? Yeah, um, there's always things to work on. Um, we've been we've been focusing on a lot of our short game um, and playing the game like it should be. You know, a lot of hit and runs. We've squeezed a lot throughout the 20, 26, 27 wins. Um, you know, just just back to basic you know, playing the game like it should be, you know, um, just a lot of bunts, a lot of squeezes, a lot of hit and runs and, you know, and hitting in, in being situational hitters, you know? So I think that's, that has, uh, pushed us to come, uh, across some of those tight games that we had, you know, the Linfield three to one, we did a lot of bunning and stealing. So I think, uh, just the basic fundamental stuff has pushed us through those tight games. Yeah, Coach, I was just kind of digging through your schedule right now. I mean, you, honestly, you haven't had a lot of close games. You've had a couple. Uh, it looks like Palm Desert was a run, one-run game. That Linfield you just brought up was 3-1. to one. Uh, Arborview, which I um, – that was one of those tournament games, 6-5. to five. Right. But, I mean, you guys have been scoring a lot of runs. I see a bunch of shutouts as well. Um, you know, like, obviously you want to play some close games, right? So you feel like you've kind of been in, in some uncomfortable situations before you get to the right. playoffs. But, um, right. you know, the, the team finds a way to score a lot of runs and not make it close. I guess that's a good thing, too. 
That is a good thing. You know, as it gets later uh, on some of those close games, you know, uh, fourth or fifth inning, um, I do have uh, all the confidence in our in our hitters. Like I know that we're going to score a couple of runs, and that's why um, on those games where I walk up to the pitcher if they're struggling, I said, you know, hey, we're okay. We're going to get you some runs. Just keep dealing, and uh, we'll find a way to score. You know, Coach, I, I don't want to, you know – this is not a slight on any of the uh, other teams on your schedule, but like you played, you beat Bishop Gorman. You know, everyone knows Bishop Gorman from a football fame and they're, they're good at a lot of stuff. I mean, was there, was there a, a game or a moment this season so far where you're like, wow, we, we're pretty good. Yeah. Bishop Gorman is a great team. Those, those guys, uh, there's a scrappy team. Uh, the same with Arbor view that, that was an amazing game for us. And so, um, yeah, it was tight. So I, you know, you get a little nervous and and uh, you kind of push through it. But the great games, great teams, great games, and I and I, I hope in the future we get to play more of those kind of teams. All right, coach. Finally, uh, you know, Division Three will be tough. You know, in the CIF Southern yeah. Section playoffs, there's gonna be some good teams out there. But what do you think the Falcons have to do well to, you know, maybe win a couple games in a row and make a run in CIF? I think just keep doing what we're doing, playing as a team. Um, you know, I have tons of girls that could come off the bench and do exactly what the starters are doing. So I think that that for a coach is, um, it's wonderful. And so I could call on any of them at any time. And so, um, I think we just keep doing what we're doing. We just keep grinding and, and staying gritty and, uh, and hopefully, um, we can get, you know, as far as God will let us and, you know, he has a journey for us. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Keep the perfect season intact. The gritty Falcons. <laughs> Coach, listen, I really appreciate the time. This has been a lot of fun. And, uh, and keep this thing rolling, man. God bless you guys. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Pep. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. That's Lenny Duran. He's the head coach at Aquinas, 26-0, trying to go to 27-0 as they will wrap up league play at Woodcrest Christian tomorrow. All right. Uh, we're going to go to another quick commercial break here on the Inland Sports Show. When we come back, we'll talk Summit Baseball. We'll be right back. Jason at Ken Sporting Goods. We're almost to 1,000 Instagram followers. Tell your friends, like us, come down, see us. Thank you so much for your loyalty. Do nutrition supplements really build muscle? Absolutely, if you know what to take and how to take it. First, it's important to understand that muscle doesn't build itself. Any use of supplements should be backed by a solid strength program. Second, timing is key. Consuming supplements at the right time makes them that much more effective. Lastly, make sure you're consuming the right supplements. For my athletes, I always recommend carbohydrates, whey protein, and a high quality creatine. Your boy, Boost Man. of the Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods in Norco. Number one in the Inland Empire for team uniforms, sports equipment, and letterman's jackets. Boost performance training in Corona. Athletes of all levels and all sports train at Boost. And also ask about the Bass Private School. Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Personalized treatment you deserve from an orthodontist you can trust. 
Chick-fil-A in Rialto, right off the 210 freeway at Ayala Drive. Eat more chicken. And welcome back, everybody, to the Inland Sports Show, talking more high school baseball. And uh, these guys are coming off a dramatic walk-off win against Bloomington, which is a very important game in terms of that league championship race in the Sunkiss League. We are flying high with the Skyhawks. Summit head coach Sammy Lopez joining us here on the show. And, Coach, I saw the video on Twitter. I'm like, man, we got to get Coach Lopez back on the show. Um, it was a dramatic win, but, Coach, it was also a big win, right, against Bloomington in terms of how the league's shaping out. Yeah, no, definitely uh, with them right right at our heels and uh, Rialto there as well and still having to play Kaiser next week. It's a, it was a, definitely a, a must win. You know, Coach, obviously – as the coach, that's a stressful situation, but um, that's, why we, that's why we play sports, right? That's why we love baseball. It's like those moments. I mean, what, what was it like for you in the dugout when that all unfolded? Uh, it, was, it was exciting to happen, man. Uh, you know, the, the kid, uh, Cody Smathers, who ended up getting that triple that finally got us some runs and, and tied up the game. Um, you know, I think he was 0-2, 1-2 at some point and kept fouling stuff off. It must have been like a 10-12 pitch at bat and uh, was finally able to get one into the gap and you know, after that, it was just, it, it got even more exciting, you know, with only two innings left. All right. Uh, coach, as we talk, Johnny, if you have that walk-off hit, go ahead and play it at any point. But uh, so, Coach, you get this walk-off win against Bloomington, and there's still some important games in front of you guys to wrap up that league championship. Kaiser's a rivalry. So do you think that that walk-off win being as dramatic as it was, can that kind of maybe – you know, swing some momentum your way as you go through these final couple games of the regular season now? No, yeah, definitely. We've definitely had a momentum on our side. We've been playing really good ball. I think something like 12 wins in a row, but uh, Bloomington's tough. <laughs> you know, they got us the first go around one nothing in a very quick game, uh, just very well-pitched game. So uh, we know it was going to be difficult, and it was kind of seeming like it was going to go the same way uh, yesterday. So it was, uh, it was really good to get that one. I hope it just kind of uh, gets our continues our, to, to raise our confidence going into tomorrow's game and get that rubber match. Yeah, and Coach, man, whoever shot that video, that was a perfect view, like right down the line over, over the first base bag, man. That was, that was perfect. But you mentioned the 12-game winning streak. When you look at the last 12 games, you know, can you pinpoint what this team is doing well right now? I mean, is it a little bit of everything? It's a little bit of everything, but, you know, like the backbone of any good team is the pitching. And uh, we got a couple – Great frontline starters and Dylan Harrison and Cody Smathers, but just as important, we got a couple guys in the back end coming out of the pen and Ryan Oaks and uh, Jojo Duran uh, giving, you know, a lefty and another righty that just give us different looks and can give us multiple innings at, at any point. And it's just uh, really shortens up that game for sure. All right, so coach, I got your schedule up. Uh, so that was a big win. Actually, a couple big wins in a row when you look at that, uh, you know, a couple games against Rialto and then the Bloomington walk-off. You got Bloomington um, again, and then you've got that huge series against Kaiser to finish up the season. Um, what are you hoping to see out of your team these last couple of games before you get to the playoffs? Is there something that you just want to, you know, feel good about the team, feel confident about the team before you get to the playoffs? What are you hoping to see from your team in these last couple games? Just continue to compete, you know, continue to be consistent in what we do well and pitch and defend and um, just make sure that the moment's not getting too, you know, too big, make, making sure no game is too big. But having a walk off win like that in the last couple of weeks is uh, is huge, you know, trying to build that momentum, understanding that we can do, you know, we can do that even when we're down um, in a game. You know, I think that 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 plays into the playoff atmosphere really big. That's what these games are starting to feel like here in the la in the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah, we just got to keep pitching well, keep defending, give our offense an opportunity. Our offense is also really strong. And, um, you know, we rely on, on that pitching to keep that score down. And eventually it kind of seems like our offense is able to kind of put some runs together and, and uh, give us a good chance of winning a ball game. Yeah, the offense doing its job. I'm looking at the, you know, some of the stats. The pitching has been fantastic. I mean, a lot of, a lot of four to ones or, you know, four to zero, something like that. You know, the, so the pitching has been locked in. Coach, your overall record is 20 and four, including nine and one on the road. What's it about you guys going on the road and feeling like, you know, you can win anywhere, anytime? Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with our, uh, our offense. You know, our first, our top four or five hitters are, are really difficult, you know, to, uh, to maneuver against as a pitcher. So, uh, trying to, trying to get some runs early on the board and, you know, take, take defense, hopefully with the run or a couple runs on the board is always, uh, always important. So, our offense team tends to like to hit first, you know, um, so 
yeah, it, it's good, man. You know, we, we do do well on, on, uh, on the road for sure. So, Coach, listen, Fontana is always windy. So would you say that uh, Summit High School is a hitter-friendly park or a pitcher's best friend? Oh, it depends on the day, you know, like the, not, not, it's, it's, it's been warming up. So there's like a slight breeze blowing out helps our, helps our hitting, um, earlier in the season, those Santa Ana's are knocking everything down, you know? So it's just like this time of the year, we don't have as many wins. So it kind of helps our hitters. Um, but very easily those Santa Ana's roll in and it's just, <laughs> you hope to hit, hit ground ball to the right side. And that's how it's, how it's going to happen. <laughs> the, the launch pad out there at Summit yeah. High School. Coach, you mentioned some of your, you know, your pitchers, some of the front end guys, the back end guys. Let's do a little more name dropping. Who are some of the guys that have really stepped up this season for the Skyhawks? Um, you know, hitters uh, from the top. We have uh, Isaac Caston on. Evan Spencer, a sophomore, is having an amazing year um, hitting in that two hole. Um, my son, Sammy Lopez, is uh, hitting third, doing another, you know, having another amazing year. Dylan Harrison doing it both ways. And, you know, um, Stacking up the hits there. Ian Stewart, our catcher, doing a great job defensively, but also hitting in, a, in, in the middle of the order. They're doing a great job. Morales, uh, Anakin Morales, uh, having a huge year, a huge senior year has been really very, very helpful. And we got guys like Cody Smathers, you know, who hit that triple yesterday, hitting like in the seven hole. Um, this kind of shows you how deep our lineup is. And um, one through nine, I really feel we have a lot of guys that can, can, can do damage. That's a perfect segue. I was going to ask you that, you know, whether it's your one, two, three in the lineup or maybe your seven, eight, nine, like you feel like, hey, whoever's coming up to bat, we, we, we feel good. Whoever's at the plate, we're going to score some runs. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's times it feels like we have two lineups up there. You know, the top half and, and, the, lo and the bottom half can be just another, uh, another set of uh, another, another batting lineup down there. And that's been a key to our success is when we really go offensively, we have those, that bottom lineup turning up that line, turn over, turning over that lineup and, uh, allowing our top, you know, top of the order to really do some damage. All right, Coach, finally, you, you mentioned your son. How is that going? Do you, do you guys, does he enjoy being around you? Or is it like, Dad, I, you know, this is too much. Like, I see you all the time. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, do you guys sit at the dinner table and, and break down, you know, uh, games and plays and whatnot? Or, you know, how, how's that all work out at home? No, yeah, he, he definitely, uh, you know, we definitely have our talks and kind of go over at bats and things like that at home. But I got to. I got to make sure I give him the time to just be a kid as well. You know, there, there's good days, right? <laughs> and just like, uh, you know, playing for me is not easy and being, you know, I'm sure being a, uh, my son on the team isn't easy, uh, isn't easy either, but he handles it great. I got two daughters. One's a cheerleader. One does swimming. I don't know a whole lot about either. So I just go. Good job. Yeah, uh, that's swim awesome. faster. <laughs> smile more. Or whatever. I don't know a whole lot. So it's easy on my end. Coach, listen, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you jumping on. Congrats on that big walk off win against Bloomington. Uh, I know another big one against the Bruins and a big series against Kaiser in the final week. And uh, as you guys get a little bit closer to that Sunkiss League championship. So Coach Lopez, thank you so much for jumping here on the Inland Sports Show. Hey, Pep. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got it. That's Sammy Lopez from Summit High School. Man, the Skyhawks are doing it again this year and uh, very close to another Sunkiss League crown. When we come back here on the Inland Sports Show, boys volleyball at Hillcrest. We'll be right back. Do you know how many calories you should be consuming every day? Too often I talk to athletes who want to build lean muscle and the first thing they do is either buy a big tub of protein or drastically cut their calories. Like competing, to get the win with nutrition, athletes need a solid game plan. This means a diet that consists of complex carbs, lean proteins, and essential fats. And more importantly, knowing how much to eat of each. Your boy, Boost Man. Show is proud to partner with Dr. Marcus Paulson and Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Dr. Paulson and his team work with children, teens, and adults using orthodontic products like traditional braces and Invisalign to make a difference in the appearance, comfort, and function of each patient's teeth. Paulson Orthodontics welcomes new patients, so schedule a visit today.
Wilson Orthodontics. We make braces fun. number one seed I don't know if they're necessarily very scary because they're, they're very talented but very young they have no playoff experience is Oklahoma City they're the number one seed in the Western Conference so for some reason the Lakers you know lose that first playing game to New Orleans then beat the winner of Golden State and Sacramento they would see the Oklahoma City Thunder in that case I would much rather, if I'm the Lakers, play them than play Denver. Denver is, I still think that Denver's going to go deep, if not do it again. And Patrick, finally, let's tee it up with some Masters talk. The green jacket goes to Scotty Scheffler for the second time in the last three years. He has been the world's number one player. I think it's like 82 weeks in a row. So there is no doubt. If you're looking for a star in golf, it's Scotty Scheffler. Sports. Hanging out with my boy Patrick in the morning on KCAL 96.7 FM every Monday and Thursday. Check it out. We were talking some NBA playoffs. The Lakers did win. Uh, they won that play-in game right against New Orleans. So now the Lakers will get the Denver Nuggets in the first round. And uh, my Sacramento Kings punking Golden State. So the Kings will now play New Orleans for a shot to be the uh, number eight seed and go up against Oklahoma City in the first round. All right, so that's enough NBA talk. Let's get to boys volleyball. That's what that's the big news here, right? High school boys volleyball, the Hillcrest Trojans. I said off the top of the show, they've never lost in River Valley League play ever. In fact, you're about to hear from Everton Souza, the head coach of the Trojans. I asked him, well, how many games is that? Like how many in a row? And he's like, you know, I don't really know. So I went back and I did the math. And if you if you count that short COVID season, I think it's 34 straight matches in the River Valley League and they've never lost. And they had some close ones this year, including against Ramona High School. The Rams are really on the up and coming, uh, but they still found a way to win in five sets. Here's our interview with Everton Souza, River Valley League champs playing tonight against Norda Vista to wrap up the regular season. And then it's on to the Division Three playoffs. Here's our interview with Coach Souza. Sports. And now joining us here on the Inland Sports Show as we're getting ready for the boys volleyball playoffs coming up very soon. He's the head coach at Hillcrest Everton, Souza, and they are your River Valley League champions. Coach, first off, congrats on, on a league championship, but this is old news to you, I guess. You're used to winning league titles. You know, we've been pretty fortunate in the River Valley League. We have yet to lose one, and this year was closer than in years past, but we're, we're excited, humbled, and happy that we won another one. You know, Coach, before we talk about this year's team and the River Valley League um, as a whole, but, you know, just the sport of boys volleyball, I feel like it, it grows a little bit each and every season. Is that safe to say as well? Oh, 100%. You know, I think when I first started coaching boys volleyball in the area was at La Sierra High School in 2007. I think we were limited to the Big Eight in Riverside, and I think Ukaipa had their league there, but very, very few schools didn't have boys volleyball. And to see just about every school in our area having a program and to watch the growth of each team, I mean, I'm super excited about it. You know, and just the level of play, the number of athletes that are joining boys volleyball and competing against, it's just exciting to watch. And Coach, going back to the River Valley League, you said you've been fortunate to, you know, go undefeated. How, how, many, how many league wins in a row? Do you know off the top of your head? Oh, boy. I mean, I, I know we've won the, the River Valley since the River Valley was a River Valley. <laughs> so we, we have not lost a league title in the River Valley. We have not lost a match in the River Valley League since it began. But I, I like to say it's four or five titles in a row, maybe more. I know we were in the Big Eight prior to that, so I, I kind of lose count of 
when we were in the big eight or when we were in the river Valley. But... <laughs> coach, you're too humble. If I, if I was the head coach, I'd, I'd know how many matches <laughs> exactly. How many sets we won. <laughs> You know, my philosophy is I did too. If I did a lot, you know, if I'm still talking about what I did last year, we probably didn't do enough this year. So <laughs> we kind of focused on every year. And this year was probably one of the toughest years that we had in the River Valley. Ramona has, has always competed with us well, I mean, like other teams. But every year Ramona gets a little bit closer. And this year we were fortunate to get a win at Ramona. And then we were fortunate to get a win at home in five sets against him in both matches. So uh, it was definitely getting closer. So... We're, we're super happy that we were able to win another one this year against them. All right, Coach, um, as we do this interview, you guys are playing on Wednesday night when this show will be airing live. Um, you're going to finish things up against Norta Vista. The way your, your team is playing right now, are, are the Trojans peaking at the right time as we get closer to the playoffs now? I like to think so. I mean, we've, we've had a couple guys that came in a little late for our team, Jacob Lillard being one of them. You know, bas our basketball program is pretty, pretty solid, too, and he had a long basketball season, so he comes in, and he's been a huge help for us. Started as an opposite, and now he's running middle for us, so that's helping a lot. It improved our block. I think uh, we have some injuries coming up. Our starting libero for three years was injured before, I think, league play started, so we had to convert one of our outside hitters into a libero, and he's done an exceptional job for us, Larry Kovac. So... Guys have started to grow a little bit more in their positions. So I'd like to say we're peaking at the right time. We're hoping that we're peaking at the right time. You know, unfortunately, in years past, our league success has not transferred directly into playoffs. You know, we're hoping that this is a year that we can make a good run. You know, that's what we're hoping to do. Well, Coach, speaking of making a good run in the playoffs, what division are you guys for the postseason? We're in Division Three. And is, is that the same that you've been in the last couple of seasons? Is it three? Yes. So we've, we've bounced around from when we first, uh, I think our first league title at in the River Valley. No, it was, we were in the big eight mm -hmm. at Hillcrest High School. We were in division one. So that was really, really tough. And, you know, we've been slowly progressing down to hopefully a division that we can be more competitive in. Uh, two years ago, we made it to the quarterfinals of Division Three, and then last year, unfortunately, we've we've had a really really good team in the first round, and we lost in the first round, and we're still in Division Three. I'm not sure if we're still in the right division. I mean, time will tell. You know, we're hoping that we do well this year, and uh, just see what happens. You know, Coach Souza, is it safe to say, like, as you know, teams like. Ramona, you know, getting a lot better. And I you know Arlington had a decent squad as well. As those teams get better, in, in turn, does it make Hillcrest better? Because you guys have to, you know, step up your game and step up your level. So maybe by the time you get to, like you said, the Division Three playoffs, you feel a little more battle tested. You've seen some, you know, good teams and been in some uncomfortable situations. So you're ready for the playoffs. 100%. And in, in years past, you know, because we've had such success in our league, you know, it was hard to go from what was happening in our league into playoffs where teams were finishing third in their league and playing at a much higher level than we were. You know, and, and this year, I felt that for the first time, you know, Ramona, for example, was winning a lot of games outside of our league. So we felt that the whole level of the River Valley has gotten to a level where they can compete with anyone in our area. So that's obviously helpful. You know, the unfortunate part is right when we're here and we're excited about our league, there's no more. We're leaving the River Valley after this year <laughs> and we will be in a different league, which I know it's going to be more competitive. So, you know, I'm happy for the progression that it has and I'm looking forward to the following year to even more competitive matches. So, Coach, I, again, I, I don't want to look too far ahead because I want to, you know, still talk about your team in the playoffs. But when you look ahead, I, I would assume you guys will be Ivy League in the rain, in the the Raincross Conference, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. Well, Coach, this year's team. We talked about, you know, trying to peak at the right time and be ready for the playoffs. And I know Division Three is tough. But finish yep. this sentence. What does Hillcrest have to do? Hillcrest has to blank to string together a couple wins in the playoffs. I think we have to block better than we did in the past. Our, de our defense is picking up. One of the issues that we've had previously 
was serve receive. And a big reason for that is that we don't see the type of serves that we will see in playoffs. So we're, we're doing a couple of things in our gym. We're, we're working through it. You know, we've had better competition this year than we've had in the past. We didn't have as much success in tournaments as we had last year. And, and that's saying that the competition that we're getting is better. We played teams like Vista Marietta and uh, a couple of their teams that really pushed us, that showed us, you know, high-level serving serving that we're probably going to face in playoffs. So we're hoping that some of those things will help us. You know, and we're doing what we can in our side, in our gym, to just kind of get ready for the type of serves, the type of offense that we're going to get uh, coming up. So let's hope that this is our year. <laughs> hey, Coach, final question. Does everyone in the Sousa house play volleyball? You know, funny story. Yes. And we laugh about this one because me and my wife, you know, when we were dating and so forth, we played a lot of volleyball together. We went to the beach and played. We would go to open gyms and play. And then after we got married and had kids, no more. And then the kids asked her, she says, Mom, why aren't you playing volleyball with us? Well, I don't really like playing volleyball. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't like playing volleyball? You used to play volleyball all the time. She says, well, I play volleyball because of you. It doesn't mean I really like playing it. So, uh, so I think she still likes to play. But uh, the the answer is yes and no at this point. But uh but I'm happy that that's one of the activities that we can still do together. Well, Coach, listen, congrats on a, a River Valley League championship again this season. Best of luck in the CIF Southern Section playoffs that are coming up. Really do appreciate the time. It's been way too long. It's great, uh, good to catch up with you and talk a little volleyball. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Yes, sir. That's Everton Souza from the Hillcrest Boys Volleyball Team, your RVL champions in 2024. Inland Sports. Big thanks to Coach Souza and good luck to the Trojans in the upcoming boys volleyball playoffs. One more quick note before we go. Uh, I just got word that Riverside Poly has defeated Temesco Canyon in softball in the 11th inning walk-off home run, I believe, from Katie Cortez. So that means Riverside Poly is your Ivy League champions, and they continue their winning streak. We talked about Aquinas going 26-0. Well, Riverside Poly... They lost their first game of the season, and now they are undefeated for their next 25 games straight, including today. It just went final. In fact, uh, big shout out to Coach and uh, Jim Vaughn, the athletic director. They just sent me the video of the game-winning home run, so we'll put that on the Inland Sports uh, social media platforms, definitely Instagram and definitely on Twitter. So make sure you follow Inland Sports on social media. Congrats to the Riverside Poly Bears. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Inland Sports Show. Thanks to Coach Souza, Coach Lopez for Summit Baseball, Coach Duran at Aquinas Softball, and the Corona High School Baseball team. Really appreciate them all coming on the show because it doesn't work without you guys participating and uh, coming on and doing these interviews. And we really appreciate it as we showcase the best of high school sports. And uh, can't wait till we get to the playoffs. About another week or so before we really dive in. Big shout out to Johnny Nunez, our director behind the scenes here at Team Vision TV 16. My name is Pep Fernandez. God bless you guys. Stay safe and we'll see you next time on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show.